Well, you're listening to CKUA. My name is Grant, and the program is Alberta Morning. Thrilled to be joined right now by a poet who's appearing at Joyful Noise, a Black History Month celebration taking place this Saturday, February 3rd, at the Windspear Center for the Arts. Medjean is here with us right now. Medjean, thank you so much for making some time to come join us this morning. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to just talk a little bit about even just my experience with uh, Five Artists, One Love and uh, for for this week's event, yeah. It's really exciting that the Five Artists, One Love thing, the, the whole celebrations which carry on at the Art Gallery of Alberta and this big concert at the Windspear Center bringing together so many different artists, you get to be on stage with such a wide variety of performers, poets and musicians of so many different genres and generations. What does it feel like to be able to be part of such a group of performers from here in the community that you call home and, and on such a an incredible stage as as at the Windspear. It's amazing, honestly, because it's the caliber of excellence in, in everybody's artistry, whether it be musicians or singers or dancers, is so high. Just to be part of it is just, it's an honor, and it makes me feel proud to be in Edmonton and to be part of this show. And you're about to transport us into uh, uh, the land of poetry in a moment. You've brought a book with you. There's a lot to celebrate. First off, February 1st is your birthday, so yeah. happy birthday. Thank you. How exciting. <laughs> and you have a new book to share as yeah. well. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah. So my uh, last year, I published my first uh, collection of poetry, and it's a multilingual poetry. So it's in French, English, and Creole, and it's called Waiting in the Land of the Living, or Attendre dans le monde des vivants. A lot of the poetry within my collection delves into the wrestle of waiting for healing. So so I talk a lot about my experience in just navigating intergenerational healing. So seeing my the things that my family struggle with, particularly my mother, and how that kind of transfers to me as the eldest of, of my family of five and how I've coped with that. And, and also I have, I have a chronic illness. And so I've, I've navigated a lot of challenges with that. And, and within that, the wrestle of, of wanting to recover. So a lot of my poems delve into just the wrestle of waiting for healing. And so that's, that's where waiting in the land of the living comes from. Well, congratulations on your remarkable accomplishment, and I'm so thrilled that you've elected to share some of this work with us on the radio today. What are we going to hear? Yeah, so I wanted to share um, a poem that's uh, called To the Tender I Buried, and it's actually a poem about, uh, it came from a place where I was realizing that the voice that I used to um, communicate with myself as I was struggling to to heal was harsh. It was um, I was realizing that I was being so hard on myself in in my ability in my in my body's ability to recover from a lot of the flares that I was going through, and so this became a love letter to myself. And so that's the one thing I love about poetry is that it allows you to reclaim a narrative, whether it be internal or external. And, and and the magic of poetry is the magic of language where you're able to uh, change a word and to make it mean what you want it to mean and almost like redeem it. And so, yeah, so this poem really is a love letter to the tenderness that I buried in the midst of just trying to be strong, trying to put up a front that I'm okay when when I really needed to be held tenderly, not only by others, but also by myself, by my own voice and in the way that I treated my recovery. And so that's the story behind this poem. That's so beautiful. This is Majin, who's kind enough to share some of her work with us here on CKUA. To the tender I buried. Somewhere between the wounds and the I should be healed by now, I got angry and blamed your knees for letting me down. When it took longer than the six weeks of sick leave to recover, I became convinced that your depleted muscles were to blame for the puncture of my ambitions. You were a problem, so I became hostile. I pulled you away from those who offered you a safe to deposit your fragile into. 
I don't know why I interrogated every offering as if you were unworthy of this cradle. I often tried to offer you flowers long after throwing you insults. My hands have been so used to carry stones that they don't know how to apologize for these bruises. Recently, I've learned to loosen my grip and stop playing offense against the only team that will always be there for me, soaking myself in a bath full of grace to remove the calloused memories that shape themselves into scapegoats. These animals have now shriveled into kindness and I thank God. Somehow, we are experiencing the nakedness of new mercies. I have not yet learned to write love letters, but I am a curious and eager scholar. Incredible. Uh, Bejin, thank you so much. That was so moving and beautiful. And, and what a thrill it is to get to share this, this conversation with you. I really appreciate this so much. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, I'm excited to, to see what, um, what Saturday will be. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a big day. Yeah. Joyful Noise uh, performance, a rather all-star performance, which is marking Black History Month celebrations for Five Artists, One Love. Find out about this Saturday's performance at the Windspear Center by going to fiveartistsonelove.com and find out more about this incredible poet by checking out her website, Majin.ca. Thank you, Majin. Thank you.